Welcome to the Breeze XDAM8 Building Structures Demonstration. In this presentation, we'll take a quick look at two example scenarios, each with an external explosion. In the first example, we'll continue to refine the city scenario by adding detail to the building closest to the explosion. Without detailed floor plans, we'll use our experience to convert the simple block building into a generic office building. Let's get started with the first example. We begin with the large-scale, low-resolution city scenario. Our objective is to refine the explosion analysis by adding detail to the first of many buildings. Starting with the first floor, begin adding detail using simple cut and drag operations. After making a few cuts and dragging a few planes, we have the first corner column and an adjacent wall panel. We can then copy the column and wall panel multiple times to define the front external wall. In a few minutes, the structural components of the first floor are defined. We then copy the first floor up five times, add internal walls, set material properties, add furniture, and add people. Notice that the top five floors have the same office layout and the bottom floor has four shops in each corner with an elevator. Notice that we have populated the top five floors of the building with the same 32 people for a total of 160 people. We now have a generic six floor office building with shops, elevators, offices, furniture, and 160 occupants. Our objective now is to run this pickup truck explosion simulation three times. The first time to compare the damage to all the local buildings, the second time to analyze the damage to only the detailed building, and the third time to investigate the structural damage and occupant injury to a single floor of the building. We begin with a large grid. Blue buildings are included in the simulation while yellow buildings are excluded. We run the model and then begin analyzing the results by examining the pressure distribution using animated isosurfaces. We then observe the damage distribution to all the local buildings. Notice that for this scenario, the Hexdam High Explosive Damage Assessment Model computes damage to both low and medium levels of structural detail. We now move in closer to analyze the damage to only the detailed building. In this case, we define a smaller grid including only the building and the explosion. We run the model and again examine the pressure distribution using an animated isosurface, this time with a transparent building. We then animate the damage to get a better feel for the damage distribution. Different than the single valued isosurfaces, we can observe regions of pressure distribution using volume rendering. Volume rendering is powerful to identify regions of pressure between two values. We can then use a contour plane to observe cross-sectional pressure distributions. Let's now move in even closer and look at a single floor, in this case the second floor. With the grid defined, we then include the first and third floors in the model run. We run the model and then begin analyzing the pressure distribution by hiding the first and third floors, making the second floor transparent and then running an isosurface animation. With all three floors displayed, we can take a look at the exterior damage and for the first time the third floor's interior damage. Let's hide the first and third floors again and move around to the other side to get another perspective. To get an even better idea of the blast passing into the structure, we can use the animated volume rendering. Notice the regions of lower pressure. From this perspective, we can now best observe the floor's damage distribution. Notice how most of the damage is sustained in the corner nearest the explosion. Let's now move in and take a look at the injury to the people. The color coding indicates different levels of damage to the different body components. Let's move to the most exposed corner office and use a contour plane to inspect the local pressure distribution and the resulting injury to the occupant. Notice how we can quickly examine the occupant injury by completely hiding the structure and moving around from one person to the next. This concludes the first example. Let's move to the second, more complex example. 